The first question gives us the periodic table of Dmitri Mendeleev, produced in 1869. The question asks, why did Mendeleev reverse the order of these two elements? And the elements are tellurium and iodine. Now these were reversed so that the elements were in groups with similar properties. For example, iodine has similar properties to bromine, chlorine and fluorine. The second question talks about him leaving spaces because he thought missing elements belonged there and he left asterisks. Why did this periodic table become more widely accepted than previous versions? Well, Mendeleev had predicted properties of missing elements. These missing elements were discovered and filled the spaces and gaps that he left. The properties matched Mendeleev's predictions. This multiple choice question asks, what is the modern name for atomic weight? And this is relative atomic mass. Before your exam, make sure you understand that the relative atomic mass is the number of protons and the number of neutrons. Complete this sentence. In the modern periodic table, the elements are arranged in order of, well, the answer is atomic number or proton number. The following question talks about group seven of the periodic table and more specifically about astatine, which it tells us is below iodine in group seven. So if we quickly write out group seven, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and then astatine, now we need to predict a formula for the astatine molecule. Well, we should know that group seven elements are diatomic. So that means there needs to be two of them. So the formula is going to be AT2. Now to predict the state at room temperature, we should look at the group seven elements. Fluorine is a gas, chlorine is a gas, bromine is a liquid, and then iodine is a solid. So we can predict that astatine is probably going to be a solid. Sodium is in group one of the modern periodic table. Describe what you would see when sodium reacts with chlorine. Well, group one means it's very reactive. So we're gonna see a flame, a white solid would form, and then the chlorine would disappear. On the screen, you can see a large number of questions that are multiple choice. And figure one shows an outline of the modern periodic table. Which element has four electrons in its outer shell? To work this out, we need to figure out which element is in group four. If we begin to list the groups on the periodic table, we can see that J is in group four. Question B is asking which two elements in figure one are in the same period. To find out this, we need to look at the different rows and we can see that M and Q are in the same row. Which element reacts with potassium to form an ionic compound? Well, ionic bonds are usually with metal and non-metal elements and potassium is in group one. Group one elements donate their electrons to group seven elements. So the answer is Q. Which element forms ions with different charges? This is going to be M. And the last question, which element has free electron shells? To be able to answer this question, we need to understand the electronic structure. The first shell can hold two, the second can hold eight, and the third can hold eight. For an atom to have a third shell, it must have 11 to 18 electrons. If we look at the periodic table and we look at element L, we can see that's the 11th element, meaning it has 11 protons, so it must have 11 electrons. 11 electrons is gonna give it the structure of two, eight, and one, meaning it has three shells. So the answer is L. The last question of the video gives us a six marker, and it gives us figure two and figure three two different periodic tables. And the question says, evaluate Newland's and Mendeleev's tables. The question tells us we need to include a comparison of the tables and reasons why Mendeleev's table was more acceptable. Now to achieve five or six marks on this question, the mark scheme is looking for an answer that is strongly linked and logically supported with a range of correct reasons. To cover the first bullet point, a comparison of the tables, we can say the following. Both tables have more than one element in a box. Both have similar elements in the same column. Both are missing the noble gases and both arranged elements in order of atomic weight. If we're going to look for differences, we can say Newlands did not leave gaps for undiscovered elements. And Mendeleev changed the order of some elements. For example, tellurium and iodine. Now for the last bullet point, reasons why Mendeleev's table was more acceptable 
we can see at Mendeleev predicted properties of missing elements, and elements were discovered which fitted the gaps that Mendeleev left. The question is about metal compounds. Lithium reacts with chlorine to produce lithium chloride, and it gives us the diagrams below. The question says, describe what happens when a lithium atom reacts with a chlorine atom. Answer in terms of electrons. So we need to be able to state that lithium loses electrons, chlorine gains electrons, and this means that lithium donates one electron to the chlorine atom. This forms positive and negative ions. The lithium is going to be positive and the chlorine is going to be negative. The second question asks us to complete the dot and cross diagram to show the covalent bonding in a nitrogen molecule. If you take a look at your periodic table, you'll see that nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14 and an atomic number of 7, so it has 7 protons. We can also see that nitrogen is in group 5. This means it has 5 electrons on the outer shell. For the outer shell to become full, it needs 8 electrons. So nitrogen needs an extra 3 electrons. To draw this on the diagram, we just need to show that each nitrogen atom is sharing 3 electrons. The next question asks us to describe in terms of electrons what happens when a magnesium atom reacts with chlorine atoms to produce magnesium chloride. And it gives us the ions above. A magnesium ion has a charge of plus 2, so this means it must have lost 2 electrons, whereas a chloride ion has a charge of negative 1, which means it's gained 1 electron. This is the first part of our answer. Magnesium loses 2 electrons and chlorine gains 1 electron. If magnesium loses 2 electrons, this means we need 2 chlorine atoms to gain 1 electron each. So 1 magnesium and 2 chlorines come together to make magnesium chloride. Once this has happened, 8 electrons are in the outer shell of all the atoms, and this is the formation of ionic bonds. You can see on screen a diagram of a magnesium atom, and we need to use weights from the box to answer these questions. What is the name of the central part of the atom? Well, that's the nucleus. What is the name of the particle with no charge? Well, this is the neutron. And what is the name of the particle with a negative charge? This is the electron. The way I always remember this is P for positive, so that's the proton. Neutral and neutron sound the same. And if I electrocute somebody, that's negative, so that's the electron. This next question gives us a bit of context about the Earth millions of years ago and talks about the crust and the atmosphere. It says, describe the bonding in any of these compounds. You must include the electronic structures in your explanation. So if we choose carbon dioxide, we should know that that's CO2. If we were to look at carbon on the periodic table, we would see that it's in group 4. So carbon has 4 electrons on the outer shell, which means it needs 4 more. Oxygen is in group 6, so oxygen has 6 electrons on the outer shell, so that means it needs 2 more. Now for this question, we are able to use diagrams. So if you were to draw the picture on the right hand side, this would also pick up some marks. When a pair of electrons are shared, this is equal to one covalent bond. And after the bonds have formed, each atom now has a full outer shell. On the screen, you can see a diagram which represents a molecule of hydrogen chloride. The question asks what type of particles are represented by the crosses. The crosses are located outside the nucleus, so these have to be the electrons. The next question asks what type of chemical bond holds the atoms in the molecule together. Well, because they're sharing the electrons, this is a covalent bond. Would you expect hydrogen chloride to be a gas, liquid or solid at room temperature and pressure? Explain your answer. Hydrogen chloride is either a gas or a liquid at room temperature, and this is because it's a small molecule and has weak intermolecular forces. It has a low melting point and boiling point because of this. This is the last question of the video. Glass can be coloured using tiny particles of gold. Gold is a metal. Describe the structure of a metal. We can start by saying that the structure is a lattice or a regular pattern or close packed arrangement of positive ions. Metal structures have delocalised or free electrons. This is what enables them to conduct electricity. Questions about metal compounds. Lithium reacts with chlorine to produce lithium chloride, and it gives us the diagrams below. The question says, describe what happens when a lithium atom reacts with a chlorine atom, answer in terms of electrons. So we need to be able to state that lithium loses electrons, chlorine gains electrons, and this means that lithium donates one electron to the chlorine atom. 
this forms positive and negative ions. The lithium is going to be positive and the chlorine is going to be negative. The second question asks us to complete the dot and cross diagram to show the covalent bonding in a nitrogen molecule. If you take a look at your periodic table, you'll see that nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14 and an atomic number of 7, so it has 7 protons. We can also see that nitrogen is in group 5. This means it has 5 electrons on the outer shell. For the outer shell to become full, it needs 8 electrons. So nitrogen needs an extra 3 electrons. To draw this on the diagram, we just need to show that each nitrogen atom is sharing three electrons. The next question asks us to describe in terms of electrons what happens when a magnesium atom reacts with chlorine atoms to produce magnesium chloride, and it gives us the ions above. A magnesium ion has a charge of plus two, so this means it must have lost two electrons, whereas a chloride ion has a charge of negative one, which means it's gained one electron. This is the first part of our answer. Magnesium loses two electrons and chlorine gains one electron. If magnesium loses two electrons, this means we need two chlorine atoms to gain one electron each. So one magnesium and two chlorines come together to make magnesium chloride. Once this has happened, eight electrons are in the outer shell of all the atoms. And this is the formation of ionic bonds. You can see on screen a diagram of a magnesium atom and we need to use weights from the box to answer these questions. What is the name of the central part of the atom? Well, that's the nucleus. What is the name of the particle with no charge? Well, this is the neutron. And what is the name of the particle with a negative charge? This is the electron. The way I always remember this is P for positive, so that's the proton. Neutral and neutron sound the same. And if I electrocute somebody, that's negative, so that's the electron. This next question gives us a bit of context about the Earth millions of years ago and talks about the crust and the atmosphere. It says, describe the bonding in any of these compounds. You must include the electronic structures in your explanation. So if we choose carbon dioxide, we should know that that's CO2. If we were to locate carbon on the periodic table, we would see that it's in group four. So carbon has four electrons on the outer shell, which means it needs four more. Oxygen is in group six, so oxygen has six electrons on the outer shell, so that means it needs two more. Now for this question, we are able to use diagrams. So if you were to draw the picture on the right hand side, this would also pick up some marks. When a pair of electrons are shared, this is equal to one covalent bond. And after the bonds have formed, each atom now has a full outer shell. On the screen, you can see a diagram which represents a molecule of hydrogen chloride. The question asks what type of particles are represented by the crosses. The crosses are located outside the nucleus, so these have to be the electrons. The next question asks what type of chemical bond holds the atoms in the molecule together. Well, because they're sharing the electrons, this is a covalent bond. Would you expect hydrogen chloride to be a gas, liquid or solid at room temperature and pressure? Explain your answer. Hydrogen chloride is either a gas or a liquid at room temperature. And this is because it's a small molecule and has weak intermolecular forces. It has a low melting point and boiling point because of this. This is the last question of the video. Glass can be coloured using tiny particles of gold. Gold is a metal. Describe the structure of metal. We can start by saying that the structure is a lattice or a regular pattern or close packed arrangement of positive ions. Metal structures have delocalised or free electrons this is what enables them to conduct electricity. The question gives us a table and it shows us the structures of three carbon compounds. Carbon dioxide, magnesium oxide and silicon dioxide. The question says, compare the structure and bonding of the three compounds. This is a six mark question, so there's many ways you can structure your answer. But if we start with describing the atoms and ions, so carbon dioxide and silicon dioxide are made up of atoms whereas magnesium oxide is made up of ions. Now we can talk about the size of the structures. Silicon dioxide and magnesium oxide are giant structures. Carbon dioxide is made of small molecules with weak intermolecular forces. Now all three compounds have strong bonds. Carbon dioxide and silicon dioxide are formed from two non-metals, meaning their bonds are covalent. The electrons are shared. We can then talk about magnesium oxide and this is formed from a metal and a non-metal, this means the bonds are ionic and the electrons are transferred from magnesium to oxygen. 
and if we want to be more specific, we can say two electrons. The next question asks us to draw one line from each property of aluminium to the correct reason for that property. So conducts electricity. Well, this is because of the delocalized electrons. And the high melting point is because aluminium has strong metallic bonds. If we move on to the following question, we can see a figure two, which has a picture of a badminton racket, and it gives us the table below. It talks about density, relative strength, and stiffness. This format question is about evaluating the use of the materials to make badminton rackets. The easiest way to structure this question is to do paragraphs for each individual column. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to color code each column and then talk about them individually. So for density, we can see wood is the least dense, so it's the lightest to use. Aluminium is the most dense, so this will make it very heavy and it's probably not useful. If we move on to relative strength, carbon nanotube is the strongest, so least likely to break. The wood and aluminium are most likely to break because they're too weak. Relative stiffness is going to affect if the racket can bend or not. Carbon nanotubing is the stiffest, so it's least likely to bend out of shape. Wood and aluminium are not very stiff, so it could easily bend out of shape. Lastly, we need to give a conclusion. So overall, I think carbon nanotube is the best material because it's the strongest and stiffest. It is also not too heavy. This question tells us that graphite is soft and is a good conductor of electricity. We need to explain why graphite has these properties and it's where it four marks. We should talk about structure and bonding. So if we talk about structure and bonding first, each carbon atom forms three covalent bonds. This type of bonding forms layers of hexagonal rings. And this means it is soft because the layers can slide over each other and it can conduct electricity because it has delocalized electrons. This next format question is asking us to match up the structure to the statement. Hopefully, labeling the gas and the liquid isn't too much of a challenge. A substance that is ionic needs to show bonding between a non-metal and a metal, so that's going to be the third one. A substance that is a solid metal is the fourth one because we can see positively charged metal ions. The last question of the video is explain why diamond is hard. Well, diamond is a giant lattice structure that is held together by strong covalent bonds. Teacher burns sodium in oxygen. Complete the word equation. It's going to produce sodium oxide. What is the name of this type of reaction? Well, because sodium is gaining oxygen, this is an oxidation reaction. A student added copper metal to a colourless silver nitrate solution. The observations included pale grey crystals forming and the solution turning blue. We need to explain how these observations show that silver is less reactive than copper. Firstly, the grey crystals are silver and the copper ions produced are blue. This is because copper displaces silver. The next question says, a student is given three metals X, Y and Z. The metals are magnesium, iron and copper. We need to plan an investigation to identify the three metals. The question says we can do this by comparing their reactions with dilute hydrochloric acid. The investigation should look something like this. Three different test tubes and we're going to add the metals to the hydrochloric acid. We're going to then compare the rate of bubbling and copper will show no reaction by producing no bubbles whereas magnesium will produce a lot of bubbles and iron a little bit less. The control variables will be the same concentration of acid, the same mass of the metal and the same temperature of the acid. Instead of this investigation, you could investigate the change in temperature. The higher the change in temperature, the higher the rate of reaction. So this would be magnesium. This question is about displacement reactions between aluminium and iron oxide. What is meant by activation energy? Well, this is the minimum amount of energy needed for a reaction to occur. Magnesium displaces zinc from zinc sulfate solution. Complete the ionic equation. Magnesium plus zinc 2 plus makes magnesium 2 plus which is aqueous and zinc which is a solid and this is because magnesium is more reactive. Explain why the reaction between magnesium atoms and zinc ions is both oxidation and reduction. Magnesium atoms are oxidized because they lose electrons and zinc ions are reduced because they gain electrons. This following question is about electrolysis. 
Aluminium is produced by electrolyzing molten mixture of aluminium oxide and cryolite. Explain why a mixture is used. Cryolite is added to lower the melting point of aluminium oxide. The lower the melting point, the less energy that is needed. What happens at the negative electrode during the production of aluminium? Well, aluminium ions are always positive. This means they need to gain electrons to become neutral. So the answer is aluminium ions gain electrons. Oxygen is produced at the positive electrode. Complete the balanced half equation for the process. Well, if we have O2, that means we have two oxygen molecules. This means we can have two O2 minus makes O2 plus four electrons because we have two oxygens that are two minus each. Explain why the positive electrode must be continually replaced. Well, the electrode is made from carbon and the electrode reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. This means the electrode is getting used up. The graph below shows a reaction profile for the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. We need to label W, X, Y and Z. Well, first of all, the reactant is where it starts and the products is where it ends. So W is going to be the amount of energy. Z is going to be the progress of the reaction. X is the activation energy needed. This is to start the reaction. And then Y is the overall energy change from the reactants to the products. Figure one shows the energy level diagram for a reaction. How does the energy level diagram show the reaction is exothermic? Well, the products have less energy than the reactants. This means the energy has been lost to the surroundings. A catalyst is used for the reaction. Explain how a catalyst increases the rate of reaction. Catalysts provide an alternative reaction pathway that has a lower activation energy. This is going to be the end of the video. Good luck in your exams. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.